Now, many people come to the church, they want to get help. Wakati mwingi watu huja kanisani ili wapate msahada. They like to be prayed for by people for healing or deliverance. Yani wangelipenda waje wa umbewe tu ili wafanyiwe ukombozi. They want to be helped spiritually. Wanataka wasaidike kiroho. Maybe they like the friends, the friends here. Give me, give me a mic. I, this one is reception sometimes. Kama uneza pata microphone nyingine ya waya kama hii ya kufika huku utupe. So... People come sometimes for other reasons other than God. Yani watu huja kanisani wakiwa na malengo mengine kando na mungu. They want to make friends. Wamekuja kufanya urafiki. They want friends to welcome them. Wanataka marafiki wa wakaribishe. They want the pastors to pray for them. Wanataka mtungaji wa waombe. Now this is good. Give me a cord. This microphone. Wawenda kupata microphone mingine kama hii. Thank you. So, now, it's... It's good to come here for help. Ni vizuri kuja hapa kwa msahada, kusaidiwa. Because God wants to help people. Kwa sababu Mungu anataka kuwasaidia watu. But when we are helped, I hope we will respond to God. Lakini tunaposaidiwa, naomba kwamba tutamwitikia Mungu. Now please don't look there. Haya tusiwaangalie yeah. hao. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So because many people don't come to church and say, Lord, I love you. I like you. Kwa sababu watu wengi, watu wengi huja kanisani, nuwa hawasemi kwa mba mungu na kupenda na kuitaji. I want to have a close relationship with you. Mataka niwe na usiano wa karibu na wewe. Amen. Now I hope you have that heart. I want to have a close relationship with God. Na umba kwa mba utakuwa na huo mwoi wa kusema kwa mba nataka kuwa na usiana wa karibu na mungu. And when God sees that you have the heart to love God, God is very happy with you. Na mungu wanapoona kwa mba uko na mwoi wa kumpenda mungu, mungu wanafraishu wa na wewe. And he will help you greatly. Na mungu watakusaidia kwa mungu. Na mungu. First Corinthians chapter two verse nine. Katika wa Korintho wa kwanza sura ya pili mstari wa tisa. As it is written, eyes has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Jinsi ilivyo andikwa ya kwamba na hata macho wala masikio hawaja wai hayaja ona wala kusikia yale mambo ambayo mungu amewandalia. For those people who love God, God has prepared great things for them. Wale ambao na mpenda mungu, mungu amewandalia mambo mema na makubwa. These great things people have not seen and their eyes have not heard and they have not imagined in their hearts. Na vitu vikubwa hivi, watu hawajewai viyona na hata hawajewai kufikiria kuziusu. If you love God, God really sees your heart. Kwa hivyo unapo mpenda mungu, mungu anaona moyo wako zaidi. God knows who loves him. Mungu anajiwa wale wanao mpenda. And when he sees that you have a heart, not just to get help, but you have a heart to love God, God is very happy with you. Na anapo ona kuamba hauko tuna ule moyo waku fanya watu waku pende, lakini ukona moyo waku mpendeza mungu, mungu anafraisho na wewe kabisa. And when God sees your heart, He remembers how you love Him. Na mungu anapo ona moyo wako, anakumbuka vile unavyo mpenda. And He will put it in His book of record in heaven. Na sasa moyo wako utangiko katika kile kitabu cha uzima cha mungu. And He will reward you in His life and in the future. Na mungu atatumza maisha yako kuanzia sasa hadi milene. And what He has prepared for you is beyond our imagination. Na yani yote alio kuandalia ni makubwa ambwe na shida. But the people just come to the church just to get help all the time. Lakini watu huja tu kanisani ili wapate kusaidiwa. Now some people they always have needs. He watu kila wakati wapo na maitaji. They always have problems. Yani kila siku wako na matatizo. They say I have family problems. Wanasema niko na matatizo ya kifamilia. I have emotional problems. Niko na matatizo ya kiisia. I have problems with my heart. Yani ndani ya moyo wangu ni mebebezi wa mzigo mzito. Now if people look at their problems, they have problems forever. Yani unapu angalia kuhusu matatizo yako, utakuwa na matatizo siku zote. But when we look at God and say how good God is, lakini unapu mtazama mungu na tuone vile mungu alivyo muema, then when you love him and respond to him, na unapu mpenda na kumuitikia, and he will prepare for you something you never imagined. Yani atakuangalia mambo ambayo hawijia.
hawajawahi kuyawazia now let me say this i came from a very poor family anasema kwamba yeye ametoka katika familia ambayo ni ya ufukara sana in my family when i was young sometimes you know we have we didn't have much money because my father gambled a lot. Na sasa yeye katika familia yao hawakuwa na pesa nyingi sababu gani? Sababu babake mzazi alikuwa mtu wa kucheza kamari sana. And sometimes I ate rice with mold on the rice. Na sasa yeye alikuwa anakula ule wali ambao tayari umekwisha kuoza. And then we wash the rice and then wash away the mold and then cook it. Yaani ule wali ulipikwa kitambo sasa wanakula mpaka unao unaoza inabidi waoshe watoe ule uchafu wa juu ndio sasa wale wakule ile imebaki ndani. And then sometimes na wakati mwingine pia my father would take something I bought my coat or my watch and then take it to sell so he can gamble. Na babake kwa sababu alikuwa anacheza si ni kamari mchungaji. Kwa sababu anacheza kamari, alikuwa anamuibia hata kama saa yake ama chochote kile kitu hata shati anaenda kuuza ili apate fedha za kucheza kamari. Now in some way my father was good. Kwa njia nyingine babake alikuwa mzuri. But as far as financially, he has brought much financial problem to the family. Lakini inapokuja upande wa swala la hela, ameleta matatizo mengi kuhusu hela. So he came from a poor family. Kwa hivyo yeye alitoka katika familia ambayo ni maskini. And then when I believe in Jesus, anapomwamini yeye alipomwamini Yesu And I found that there are proofs that God is real. Na akaona kwamba kuna thibitisho za kuthibitisha kwamba Mungu ni yuko ni wa kweli. I was very excited. Ya kwamba alijazwa na furaha zaidi. I told many people about Jesus. Akaambia watu wengi kuhusu Kristo. I want people to be able to enter heaven in the future. Akataka watu wawe na uwezo wa kuingia mbinguni siku zinazokuja. And then soon after I believe in Jesus And I said there's so many people who are lost in the world. Na alipoamini Kristo Yesu akajua kwamba kuna watu wengi ambao wamepotea, wamepotelea duniani. And then I said to God, if it is your will, I'm willing to be a pastor one day. Na sasa akamwambia Mungu, kama ni mapenzi yako, ningelipenda kuwa mchungaji siku moja. When I have this heart to love God and follow him, alipokuwa na huu moyo wa kumpenda Mungu na kumfuata, God prepared wonderful things for me. Mungu alimwandalia vitu vya ajabu. He opened the way so I had a lot of education. He provided for me. Alimfungulia milango akapata njia za kupata kisomo cha juu zaidi. Not from my family. The money didn't come from my family. Wale waliomsomesha hawakutoka katika familia yao. God prepared the money for me. Mungu alimwandalia pesa. And at this point actually I'm retired. At this point I'm retired. Lakini wakati huu amekwisha kustahafu katika kazi ya uchungaji, but I'm serving God free full time. <laughs> Lakini sasa yeye baada ya kustahafu ndio sasa ameanza kumtumikia Mungu kwa vipindi vingi zaidi. I don't have any money income. Sio kwamba ana vitu vya kuingiza pesa. But God provided for me so I can go to different parts of the world. Lakini Mungu huwa anampa fedha za kwenda katika mataifa mbalimbali. This has been my dream for years to be able to go to different places to train people to serve God better. Jambo hili limekuwa katika ndoto katika mawazo yake miaka nyingi iliyopita lakini ndio hili limekuja kutimilika. But it is expensive to go to different places. Aha, ina gharama kuu sana kwenda katika mataifa mengine kuhubiri. But when God saw that I have a heart to love him. Lakini Mungu alipoona kwamba ana ule moyo wa kumpenda, he provided for me so I can go to different countries. Yeye alimwandalia kampa fedha za kwenda kwenye mataifa mengine. And God also provided for me is that I help Pastor Washington to go to places to train people to serve God also. Na kupitia kwake pia amenisaidia nikaenda katika mataifa mengine ili kufundisha tena. And I also help a pastor in Liberia called Pastor Gosson that he can go to train other people to serve God also. Na pia kuna mchungaji mwingine kutoka kwenye taifa la Liberia ambaye amemsaidia pia anaenda kwenye mataifa mengine kuhubiri je. So what God has prepared for me is beyond my imagination. Kile ambacho Mungu amemwandalia kinazidi mawazo yake. I only had a small organization in Hong Kong. Yeye hapo tu na kikundi kidogo kule kwao. But we have helped people help different places to build a Bible school in Kenya where he is. Na pia wamenisaidia kujenga shule ya Biblia kule Kenya kwenye ninaishi and we help 
like Tanzania, one place to build a Bible school also. And, and different things we have done for the mission field. What I say is, I did not have this money myself. It came from the provision of God. And if you really love God, this Bible verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, it tells about the nature of God here. Now let me tell you, I have a Bible study method called God's Nature Bible Study. And in this Bible study and preaching method, from each Bible verse I will explore the nature of God. When you look at this Bible verse, what nature of God can you see? Now this is also revealed to me from God, that God showed me how to do Bible study with that method. First, the nature of God, He sees your heart. Ya kwanza ni kwamba Mungu anaona moyo wako. People may not see your heart. Watu hawezi wakatazama kwa macho ya nje na waone moyo wako. Many people marry someone because the person says I love you, I love you very much. Unapata basi binti anamuelekea mwanaume fulani kwa sababu amesikia mwanaume huyo akisema kwamba nakupenda, nakupenda, nakupenda. But they didn't know that sometimes they love the money the person has. Or the person just loved the body of this woman. Many women have found that this, you know, a man said to them, I love you, I love you. But then they find out that the man just want her body. Lakini mwisho wewe utapata kwamba lengo kuu la huyu mbaba au mwanaume huyu ni kukupata tu wewe ili alale na wewe. After he has sex with the woman he might give up. Akisha maliza basi shughuli hiyo anakuweka kando. Have you heard of story like that? Umeshawahi sikia hivi sampuli hiyo? Because people cannot tell the heart of people. Kwa sababu mtu hawezi kusema kwamba moyo wa huyu mtu unawaza nini. But God's nature is he can discern what is in your heart. Lakini wasilia wa Mungu ni kwamba anaweza kuchunguza kile kilichoko ndani ya moyo wa mwanadamu. How much you love God? Ehe ni kiwango kipi unachompenda Mungu? He knows. Mungu anajua. He knows what is in your heart whether you want to give God something, you want to love God. Anajua kama kwa kweli unampenda Mungu zaidi na unataka kumpa Mungu moyo wako. Or you just want to get something from God. Ama unataka tu kupokea vitu kutoka kwa Bwana. If you have a heart to say God you're so good. Kama una moyo wa kusema kwamba Mungu wewe ni mwema. Now let me tell you why I love God very much. Hebu nikawaambie mbona nampenda Mungu zaidi. I, I tell you I really like God very much. Anasema kwamba anampenda Mungu zaidi. I think of God all the time. Anawaza kumuhusu Mungu kila wakati. When on the way here in the car a lot of time I'll be loving God. Wakati tulipokuwa tukisafiri kuja sehemu hii ndani ya gari alikuwa amenyamaza tu akimpenda Mungu. When I'm preaching here I'm thinking of loving God. Anapohubiri anafikia kumpenda Mungu. Now why do I want to love God like that? Je, kwa nini ningependa kumpenda Mungu kiwango hicho? Because I count the blessings of God. Kwa sababu anahesabu baraka za Mungu. God has created this wonderful world. Mungu ameumba hii dunia ya ajabu. God has created beautiful nature. Mungu ameumba miti inaleta maandhari mazuri. God has created delicious food. Mungu ameumba chakula kitamu. God has created a body to be very special. Mungu ameumba wale nyuni wa angani wanakuwa wa kipekee zaidi. And then when we heard about the Jesus, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Na sasa tunaposikia kuhusu injili ya Kristo Yesu. 
The Holy Spirit moves in our heart. Roho Mtakatifu anatembea ndani ya mioyo zetu to draw us to repentance. Anatuvuta tunaelekea usehemu ya toba. Now when Christians, when people believe in Jesus, watu wanapomwamini Yesu, do they all start to love God right away? Je, wanaanza na kumpenda Mungu wakati huo? Do you all start to love God very much after you believe in Jesus? Je, wakati ulipomwamini Kristo Yesu, ulianza kumpenda Yesu? And I want to say many Christians don't really love God very much. Nataka kusema wakristo wengi hawampendi Kristo kwa kiwango cha juu zaidi. They just want to get something from God. Wanataka tu kupokea vitu kutoka kwa Mungu. And very often Christians even sin. Na hata wakristo wengine unapata wame wamedumbukia katika dhambi. And God does not like our sins. Na Mungu hapendi dhambi zetu because God is very holy. Kwa sababu Mungu ni mtakatifu. When we have sinned, when God sees our sins, God feels very unhappy. Mungu anapotuona tumetenda dhambi, Mungu huwa hafurahishwi. God cannot have a very close relationship with the person. Mungu hawezi akawa na uhusiano wa karibu na huyo mtu. But God will still try to move in the person's heart with the Holy Spirit. Lakini Mungu atajaribu basi kutembea katika moyo wa huyo mtu kwa njia Roho Mtakatifu. He moves us to repentance. Na Mungu anatusukuma ili tutubu. Let me ask you, how many of you have experienced the Holy Spirit reminding you of your sin to remind you to repent? Je, nataka kuuliza ni wangapi ambao wamehisi kwamba wanapotenda dhambi wanahukumika ndani ya mioyo zao kwamba Roho Mtakatifu anawasukuma watubu? How many of you have experienced that? Thank God so many of you have experienced that. Shukuru Mungu kwa sababu kila mmoja amepitia hili. Let me ask you this. Hebu nikuulize hili. Did God move in your heart when you were obedient only? Je, Mungu alikusukuma tu wakati ulikuwa umenyenyekea peke yake? When you were disobedient, did God still move in your heart? Na wakati ulikuwa mwenye kiburi, je, Mungu aliendelea kukusukuma? When you were disobedient, does God still move in your heart to bring you to repentance? Wakati ambapo uko na kiburi, je, Mungu anaendelea kukusukuma ili kwamba utubu? Now, no. he said no. Think, think carefully. Hebu waza jambo hili vizuri. Wacha tu kujibu hapa. When you have committed a sin, wakati umetenda dhambi, did God leave you? Je, Mungu alikuacha? Or did God move in your heart to repentance? Ama Mungu alikusukuma uelekee sehemu ya toba? What did they say? The Lord did not leave them and the Lord push them toward the repentance. Right. So God did not leave us when we sin right away. Kwa hivyo unapotenda dhambi Mungu hakuwaza, akikuwaza unakufa. He continued to move in our heart to draw us to repentance. Ijapokuwa umetenda dhambi Mungu anaendelea kukutunza ili akusukume uelekee toba. Now in God's eyes our sin are like the thumb in the toilet. Aha, machoni pa Bwana dhambi zetu ni kama kwa tunasema pupu sijui huko mnasemaje ni kama kinyesi kile kilichoko ni kama mavi yaliyoko kule chooni when we say God sees us and he's unhappy kwa hivyo unaposema dhambi Mungu anakuona wewe kama pupu yani mavi na Mungu hafurahishwi but the holy spirit still moves in our heart lakini roho mtakatifu bado anamsukuma ndani ya mioyo zetu is that the love of God je huo ni upendo wa Mungu And then he moves us to believe in him. Na sasa anatufanya tunamwamini yeye. And he gives us peace and joy when we pray to him. Anatupa amani na furaha tunapomuomba. Amen. So we see that God moves in the heart when we are disobedient when we and when we are obedient. Kwa hivyo tunaona kwamba ijapokuwa tumebeba vichu wa sisi ni wenye kiburi lakini Mungu hatuache na kuwa na sisi. Of course when we love God more he works in our heart more. Hiyo tunapompenda Mungu zaidi ndivyo naye anavyotupenda zaidi. And he will give you ideas how to obey God. Na atakupa basi mawazo jinsi ya kumtii Mungu. So when we count this blessing we say God you're so good. Tunapohesabu baraka hizi tunasema kwamba Mungu wewe ni mwema. 
Because while I was a sinner, Christ died for me. Kwa sababu nilipokuwa mwenye dhambi, Kristo Yesu alikufa kwa ajili yangu. And when I was disobedient as a Christian, you move in my heart. Na nilipokuwa mimi sio Mkristo, ulinisaidia basi ukanisukuma ndani ya moyo wangu, nikaelekea toba. And then I, when I pray to you, always give me broad joy and peace. Na sasa ninapomuomba Mungu, unanipa amani na furaha. And also we can experience a strong presence of the Holy Spirit. Na tunaweza kuhisi ule msukumo mkuu wa Roho Mtakatifu. It came from the love of God. Mambo haya yote yanatokana katika upendo wa Mungu. Now when we finish uh, preaching, I will pray for you also. Nataka kumaliza basi kuhubiri hivi atawaombea. Amen. And Many of you will experience na wao is the love of God. Na watu wengi watahisi upendo wa Mungu. Because it's the love of God. Kwa sababu ni upendo wa Mungu. Let me ask you, is there someone who love you so much as God? Je, ni kuulize? Kuna mtu anayekupenda zaidi kushinda Mungu? There is no one like him. Hakuna yoyote yule mwingine kama Mungu. And he prepare for us a heaven forever. Na Mungu ametuandalia mbingu tutakapoishi milele. And we can go to heaven forever and enjoy God forever. Na tutaenda tuishi mbinguni na Mungu na tuburudike zaidi na maisha yetu yote. And he will also give us spiritual gifts so we can serve God. Na Mungu atatupa vipawa vya kiroho ili kwamba tukamtumikie yeye. And he remember everything you do for him. Na Mungu atakumbuka chochote kile ambacho umemtendea. And he reward you greatly on earth here and in future. Na yeye atakupa um, thawabu wakati huu na hata wakati wa milele. So we can see that in every aspect God is loving us all the time. So unaona kwamba kila vipindi na kila sehemu yote ya maisha Mungu anatutunza kila wakati. And that motivate us to love him more. Na Mungu anatusukuma ili tumpende zaidi. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 just now we read. Na sasa katika wagurizo wa kwanza sura ya pili mstari wa 9 ambao tumekuwa love him ya kwamba tunapompenda God's nature is he will observe it. He knows that you love him. As uwasilia wa Mungu hapo ni kwamba Mungu anakuona na anakupenda unapomtendea. And he remembers and he recorded it in the book of record in heaven. Atakumbuka na ataandika mambo hayo yote kwenye kitabu cha uzima kule mbinguni. And then he has strong imagination. Na Mungu ana mawazo makuu. He has strong creativity. Yaani yeye ni Mungu wa ufumbuzi wa hali ya juu. He will create for you a very special plan. Yaani yeye atakuandalia basi mpango ambao haujawahi uone. So that your life will go higher and higher. Ya kwamba maisha yako yataendelea kwenda juu na juu zaidi. And he will provide for you. Na Mungu atakupa vile unavyohitaji. So that you can bless people. Ili kwamba nao ukaweze kuwabariki watu. Your life will go higher and higher. Na maisha yako yataenda juu na juu zaidi. Let me tell you one blessing of God on me. Wasa niwaambie baraka yangu moja ambayo Mungu amenitendea. Let me ask you a question first. Guess how old I am? Aha. Anataka utabiri ana miaka mingapi? Yule anayejua atabiri. Guess how old I am? Ana miaka mingapi? Guess how old I am? I play tennis. Aha, unafikiria ana miaka mingapi? How old are you? He said 50. Okay. Someone else? 45? Sorry? 60. 60. Okay. Anyone else? He said 60. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. He said 65. Okay. The bishop said 65. Okay. Let me tell you, I am 67. Yeye ana miaka 67. And I don't need to wear eyeglasses. Lakini yeye huwa havai eh yale miwani ya kusoma. Then I can read small letters. Lakini ana uwezo wa kusoma zile nukta ndogo kabisa. And God give me strength. Na Mungu amempa nguvu. When I flew here I almost it was 20 8 hours. Ametumia masaa 20 na manane kutoka kwao hadi hapa. And God gives me strength all the way. Lakini Mungu amempa nguvu kwa hizo njia zote. What I'm saying is, ninachosema ni hiki, when God sees that you love him, Mungu anapoona kwamba unampenda, he remembers it 
anaikumbuka and he bless your life na atabariki maisha yako he provide for you na atakupa vile unavyo so that's God's nature yani huo ni uwasilia wa Mungu God's nature is you remember all good things we do uwasilia Mungu ni kwamba anakumbuka matendo mema yote unayoyatenda every good thing we do for him matendo yote mema unayomtendea Mungu he will remember Mungu atayakumbuka and he will bless you greatly na Mungu atakubariki pakubwa zaidi and your life will go higher and higher na maisha yako yataenda juu na juu zaidi but many people they don't turn to God but they depend on people lakini watu wengi basi wamekataa kumtegemea Mungu wamewatazama wanadamu they depend on the husband yani kama ni mama ni mwanamke anamtegemea mumewe but the husband might disappoint her na wakati mwingine basi mume wake atakukasirisha when we did depend on people will be disappointed many times ukama unamtegemea mtu basi atakukasirisha wakati mwingi but we de- when we depend on god lakini unapomtegemea mungu and say god you are so wonderful na useme kwamba mungu wewe ni wa ajabu you have given me so many good things umenipa vitu vingi vyema you always accept me ya kwamba wewe umenikubali and whenever we love you you are very happy na tunapokupenda wewe unakuwa na furaha now i want to say this you can write this down is easy to please god nataka uandike hili chini ya kwamba ni rahisi kumpendeza mungu because the bible says if we are a sinner we have a lot of sin and we repent the whole heaven will rejoice because of us manake maandiko nasema kwamba ijapokuwa sisi ni watenda dhambi tunapotubu dhambi zetu mingu yote inafurahi na kushangilia so when we are not doing so well when we repent god is very happy hata kama hatufanyi vizuri alafu tunatubu mungu anakuwa na furaha and then when we draw close to him he'll draw close to us na tunapomsongea mungu naye anasonga karibu na sisi And then when we love God he will prepare for us the things we our heart had never thought of. Na sasa tunapompenda Mungu anatuandalia vitu ambavyo hatujawahi waza kuviuhusu. So whenever we do anything for God, chochote kile unachomtendea Mungu. In Matthew 10:42, katika Mathayo sura ya 10 mstari wa 42, it says that even when you give a cup of cold water to a little one, inasema kwamba hata kama unampa mdogo wa kikombe cha maji baridi, can you do that? Can you give a cup of cold water? Je, unaweza kumpa mtu kikombe cha maji baridi anywe kama na kiu? Can you do it? Yes. If you do it because of God's love, kama unafanya hivyo kwa sababu ya upendo wa Mungu, and you do it to the little one of Jesus Christ. Na unafanya hayo mambo kwa wale wadogo wa Kristo Yesu. When you do it to a Christian, unapofanyia mkristo, or when you do it to a person you try to bring to Jesus, unapofanya hivyo kwa sababu ya yule mtu ambaye unamleta kwa Kristo, God will remember it and reward you. Mungu atakumbuka na Mungu atakupa thawabu. And the Bible says you will by no means lose your reward. Na maandiko yanasema kwamba hakuna chochote kile kitakachokufanya upoteze ile thawabu ya Mungu. So let's say to th- this together. Hebu turudie mambo haya pamoja. It's easy to please God. Hayo tuseme kwamba ni rahisi kumpendeza Mungu. Say. Okay. When we repent the whole heaven rejoices. Ya kwamba unapotubu mbingu yote inafurahia. And then when we pray God will for sure come to us. Na unapoomba Mungu anashuka karibu na wewe. And then when we love him he'll prepare for us thing we never imagined. Unapompenda anakuandalia mambo ambayo haujawahi waza kuyahusu. And then when we give a cup of cold water he'll never he will my love is Lucy's reward. Unapompa mtu kikombe cha maji baridi basi hautapoteza thawabu yako. So what I want to say is God is different from men. Kile ndio kusema ni hiki ya kwamba Mungu ni tofauti sana na mwanadamu. Na sometimes when you do something good, Amen. wakati mwingine unapofanya mambo mema, people may say, well you do this well but you don't do other things well. Aha, watu wataangalia waseme kwamba hili umefanya vizuri, lakini yale mangi mengine umeyafanya vibaya zaidi. Or they may say you need to work on it, you won't need to improve on it. Ama watakwambia kwamba ah hakuna kitu umefanya, yani watakudhalilisha kabisa. So people always look for your shortcomings. Aha. Watu wengi huwa hawaangalia ile matendo mema uliyoyatenda, lakini wanaangalia makosa peke yake ambayo wewe umetenda. And you know just that. Ushawahi gundua hivyo? Yes. But for God the Bible says it's different. Lakini kwa Mungu ni tofauti sana. Now the person who gives a little cup of cold water to a little one 
Mtu yule anayepeana kikombe cha maji baridi kwa mdogo yule, he might have many shortcomings. Anaweza kuwa ako basi na makosa mengi. The Bible doesn't say he is perfect. Maandiko haisemi kwamba yeye ni mkamilifu. He just started to do a little thing for God. Ya kwamba ameanza tu kufanya vitu vitu vidogo vidogo kwa Mungu. And God says he will not lose reward. Na Mungu anasema kwamba hautapoteza thawabu yako. So God looks at the good things you have done for him. Wakati wanadamu wanaangalia vitu vibaya ambavyo umevifanya, Mungu anaangalia vile vizuri ambavyo umevitenda. Is God different from men? Je, Mungu ni tofauti na mwanadamu? God is very different from men. Mungu ni tofauti sana na mwanadamu. He looks at what you have done for him. Anaangalia kile ambacho umemtendea. And if there are things we did not do for him, na kuna vitu ambavyo hatujamtendea, we just repent. Yakini yani sasa unatubu. Lord, I don't love you enough. Useme kwamba Mungu sijakupenda vya kutosha. But I want to love you more. Lakini nataka nikupende zaidi. Then God is very happy. Na Mungu atakuwa na furaha zaidi. And God will forgive all your sins. Na Mungu atasamehe dhambi zako zote. And you remember only the good things you have done for him. Na atakumbuka vitu vizuri tu ambavyo umemtendea. And he rewards you. Na yeye atakupa thawabu. So God gave me this kind of prayer called interactive prayer. Mungu akanipa maombi haya ambayo tunaita maombi ya mahusiano. Now there are three kinds of prayer you can write this down. Kuna aina tatu ya maombi waweza kuandika mambo haya chini. To help a relationship with God. To help a relationship with God. These three kinds of prayers to help a relationship with God. Kuna aina tatu ya maombi ambayo inakusaidia ukajenge uhusiano wako na Mungu. The first kind is the prayer of grace. Ya kwanza ni lile ombi la neema. When we pray you can always declare what God is doing to us what God is doing to bless us Maombi ya neema ni yale maombi unaoomba unasema kwamba unaomba ukitaja yale mambo ambayo Mungu anatufanyia sisi So we can say God is listening to my prayer Kwa mfano unaweza kusema kwamba Mungu anasikiliza maombi yangu God is loving me Mungu ananipenda God is helping me Mungu ananisaidia So it's always declaring God cares for us Ya kwamba unatangaza kwamba Mungu anatujali sisi Now let me ask you. Hebu niwaulize. Do some of you sometimes for no reason you just feel unhappy sometimes? Do you sometimes feel unhappy? Kuna wakati ambapo umekaa lakini unasikia kwamba umepoteza furaha, umekasirika, hauna furaha kabisa. Ishawe ifanyika hivyo kwenye maisha yako. Now that is human nature. Ya sasa huo ni uwasilia wa mwanadamu because, because of our sinful nature kwa sababu ya uwasilia wetu wa dhambi sometimes we feel unhappy for no reason wakati mwingine huwa tunasikia kwamba ama tunahisi tumepoteza furaha pasipo kuwa na sababu but at that time you can immediately declare lakini wakati huo unahisi kwamba umepoteza furaha unatangaza God is loving me now Useme kwamba Mungu ananipenda sasa hivi. God is blessing me now. Mungu ananibariki sasa hivi. God is helping me now. Mungu ananisaidia sasa hivi. So we can always declare God is loving me and helping me. Ya kwamba sasa unatangaza Mungu ananipenda na Mungu ana furaha na mimi. And this is always true. Na hili kila wakati ni ukweli. And the second prayer, kind of prayer is the prayer of worship. Maombi ya pili ni maombi ya maabudu. Lord I worship you. Ya kwamba Mungu nakuabudu. I love you. Nakupenda. I adore you. Ninakuti. I lift up your holy name. Ninalinua jina lako takatifu. I hold on to you. Nina kukamata wewe Mungu. I depend on you. Ninakutegemea wewe Mungu. I like you. Ninakupenda. Now I have prayers like this. I will say, yes I, Lord I like you. Yeye huwa anasema hivyo vile anavyosema kitabu cha Mungu kwamba Mungu nakupenda. That I rejoice because of the Lord. Ya kwamba ninafurahia kwa sababu ya Bwana. So we is our response to God. Ya kwamba hapa tunamuitikia Mungu. This is prayer of worship. Hilo ndilo ombi la maabudu. And the third kind of prayer, na ya tatu is interactive prayer. Ni maombi ya mahusiano. Whenever we pray to him, tunapomuomba yeye, And then we can believe that he is very happy and he will respond to us. That's na interactive. Na tunaamini kwamba yeye kwa kweli atajibu maombi yetu. So whenever I love God, he will always respond to my love. Ya kwamba ninapompenda Mungu, Mungu ataitikia ule upendo wangu. This gives us confidence in God. Ya kwamba hiyo unaweka ujasiri wako kwa Mungu. 
Now when many people pray, they pray like this. Wakati mwingi watu wengi wanapoomba wanaomba namna hii. Oh God, where are you? Oh Mungu uko wapi? Come and help me. Mungu siuje unisaidie. I'm in trouble. Niko kwenye matatizo. Na kuitaji. Where are you? Uko wapi? Now this is a prayer of lack of faith. Lack of faith. Haha, haya ni maombi ya mtu ambaye hana imani. Because they say God you're not helping me. Kwa sababu ukinapoomba hivyo unasema kwamba Mungu wewe haunisaidii. Come help me quickly. Hebu mjua haraka unisaidie wewe Mungu. But instead we can say, lakini tunaweza sema hivi. It's God who moves me to pray. Ni Mungu ambaye ananisukuma niombe. And whenever I pray to God, God is very happy. Na ninapomwomba Mungu, Mungu anakuwa na furaha. Whenever I love him, God is very happy. Na ninapompenda Mungu anakuwa na furaha. And whenever I love him, he prepare for me things I never imagined. Na ninapomtegemea, yeye ananiandalia vitu ambavyo sikuwa naziwaza kuhusu. And also when we serve God, we can use this kind of uh, interactive action. So whenever I give a cup of cold water to a little one, God is very happy and he for sure reward me. When I serve God willingly, God is very happy and he reward me. So we can always encourage ourselves like that. Kwa hiyo tunaweza kujiimiza sisi kwa sampuli hiyo. When we know that God is always happy with little things we do for him. Ya kwamba unapojua Mungu anafurahishwa na vile vidogo ambavyo tunamtendea. But many people don't have this heart. Lakini watu wengi hawana moyo huu. They might say, "Well, I didn't do what well enough for God." Wanasema kwamba, "Ah, sijafanya vya kutosha kwa Mungu." They might say, "Well, I there How many things I should do for God but I didn't do it. Wanaweza kusema ah kuna vitu vingi ambavyo nafaa kufanya kwa ajili ya Mungu lakini sijavifanya. So many people look at the things they haven't done. Watu wengi wanaangalia kwa vile vitu ambavyo hawajazifanya. And they feel discouraged. Na sasa wanasikia mishushu wa roho. But from the Bible verses I quote you just now, you see that God is happy with any little thing we do for him. Lakini kwenye mistari ya Biblia ambayo tumeina kilisa tunaona kwamba Mungu anafurahishwa na vile vidogo ambavyo tunamtendea. And whenever we love him, na tunapompenda, he sees our heart. Yeye anaona mioyo yetu. And he remembers it. Na anaikumbuka. And he rewards us. Na ataiwekea thawabu. And he provide for us. Na Mungu atatupa mahitaji yetu so we can serve him more ili kwamba tukamtumikie Mungu so we can bless more people ya kwamba ili tukawabariki watu wengi zaidi we seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness unapotafuta kwanza ufalme wa mbinguni all these things will be added to us na haki yake hivi vitu vingine vyote utaongezewa so we can believe in this promises of god kwa hiyo inafaa tuamini katika ahadi hizi za Mungu when god promises something Please believe it. Kama Mungu amehaidi chochote jamani, naomba ukakiamini. Amen. God gave me a, 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 a definition of faith. Mungu aliumpa kifafanuzi cha neno imani. Faith is when God promises, I believe. Imani yeye anasema kwamba Mungu kama ai ameahidi mimi nitaamini. When God promises, I relax. Mungu kama ameahidi mimi nitakaa nitulie. When God works, I relax. Mungu anapofanya kazi, mimi nitakaa tu. So whenever God works, I relax and I trust in him. Kile ambacho wakati Mungu anapofanya kazi, mimi ninakaa na kutulia na kumwamini Mungu. So any time you serve God, I know that God is very happy. Kila wakati unapomtumikia Mungu, ujue kwamba Mungu ana furaha. That is faith. Hiyo ndiyo inaitwa imani. Because the Bible has said that. Manake maandiko yamesema hivyo that i have not seen ears have not heard and the human heart is not thought of the things god has prepared for those who love him ya kwamba hata mtu haujawahi yona masikio hawajawahi sikia yale makuu ambayo mungu amewaandalia wale wanaompenda so at this point if you turn your heart and say lord if you turn your heart to god and say lord kwenye kipindi hiki unapo sasa mgeukia mungu na useme bwana i want to love you more nataka nikupende zaidi i want to put you in the first place in my life nataka nikuweke sehemu ya kwanza maishani mwangu i want to obey you nataka nikutii i want to serve you nataka nikutumikie if you sincerely do that 
Kama kwa kweli utafanya hivyo. God is very happy. Mungu ana furaha zaidi. The point is have a sincere heart. Ya kwa ile kipengele kikuu ni kwamba uwe na moyo ulio wazi. Now there are some people who serve God because they want to draw attention. Kuna watu ambao wanamfanyia Mungu kazi ili kwamba watu wengine wawaone kwamba wanafanya kazi. Now, the, the girls and the women came out and danced. It was very beautiful. Eh, wakati mabinti walivokuwa wakicheza hapa ilikuwa inavutia sana. Now, if you dance, you think of God, you're so wonderful, I want to dance for you. Kama unacheza hivyo na una moyo wako na mwelekeze ya Mungu unasema kwamba nataka nikupende hata ninapocheza then God will be happy very happy with you Mungu atakuwa na furaha zaidi na wewe But if a person dances like this kama mtu anacheza tu namna hii look at my dance angalia basi kucheza kwa It's so wonderful hali kucheza kwa kuvutia I'm better than the other girls Kwa sababu mimi nacheza kushinda yule mwingine I'm the best dancer here Mimi ndio mchezaji mzuri hapa If we have a heart like that kama tunaweza kuwa na nyoyo kama hizo God doesn't like it Mungu hapendi But if we have a heart lakini kama tuna moyo to glorify God wa kumtukuza Mungu and to bless people na kuwabariki watu and to depend on God na kumtegemea Mungu God for sure is very happy. Mungu kwa kweli ana furaha. Now in Psalm 42, katika Zaburi sura ya 42, there it says that as the deer pants for the water so I hunger for you, I pants for you. Jinsi vile maana kuna msema kama jinsi machozi nayo nitondoka ndivyo moyo wangu unashauku na wewe Bwana. Now that is one way we show our love for God. Yaani hiyo ndio njia moja ya kuonyesha upendo wetu kwa Mungu. God is my life. Mungu ni uzima wangu. The man does not live on bread alone. Ya kwamba mwanadamu hataishi kwa mkati peke yake. They will live on the love of God, the bread of God. Lakini wataishi kwa mkati ambao ni upendo wa Mungu. So you say, Lord, I hold on to you, I thirst for you. Unasema kwamba Mungu ni wewe ndiye nakushikilia, ninayo kiu na wewe. I depend on you. Na kutegemea wewe Bwana. God is very happy. Mungu anakuwa na furaha. And that is the first the most important Love for God is the relationship with him. Na uhusiano ama upendo wa kwanza ambao mwanadamu inafaa uwe nao ni ule uhusiano wako na Mungu. Then we want to spend more time and say Lord I love you. Ya kwamba ungelipenda uchukue muda wako mwingi wa kusema kwamba Mungu nakupenda. And then whenever we love him we can say Lord the Lord is very happy that I'm loving him. Na sasa unapomtegemea Mungu unamwambia Mungu nakupenda Mungu naye nakupenda zaidi hata kuliko vile unavyompenda. That way we have strength to love him. Hapo uta kuna nguvu za kumpenda Mungu. The Bible says to, you know that for God is spirit that God wants us to worship in spirit and in truth. Maandiko yasema kwamba kwa sababu Mungu ni roho basi wale wanao muabudu wa muabudu katika roho na kweli. Now what does it mean to worship in the spirit? Ina maanisha nini kuabudu katika roho? It means a whole spirit a whole soul worship God. Ina maanisha kwamba uh, roho yako yote na nafsi yako yote imwabudu Mungu. Our soul includes our soul includes our mind, our will and our feelings. Basi nafsi yetu inahusisha mawazo yetu, nafsi yetu na hisia zetu. First the mind to say everything in the Bible I agree with. Ya kwanza akili zako ziseme kwamba kila chochote kilichoandikwa katika Biblia ninakubaliana nacho. And I believe everything in the Bible and I want to follow everything in the Bible. Na ninaamini kila kitu na nilipenda kufuata Biblia. That is worshiping with the mind. Hiyo ndio kuabudu Mungu kwa akili. You know in my mind I know God is the best. Na sasa yeye katika akili zake anasema kwamba anajua Mungu ndiye wa kwanza. Everything he does is beautiful and wonderful. Chochote kile anachokifanya kinavutia na ni cha ajabu. So I really Love God with all my mind. I agree that God is the best. Kwa hivyo nimekwisha kumpenda Mungu kwa mawazo yangu yote na nasema kwamba Mungu ndiye mzuri namba namba moja. And then I love God with all my will. Ninampenda Mungu na I want to serve God until I die. I want to serve God until the day I die. I'm still looking for that word will in Swahili. Nataka nimpende Mungu kwa kwa hisia hisia ni emotion that you know that i would say i dedicate my whole life to god ya kwamba ninatoa maisha yangu yote kwa mungu that i give my whole life to god ya kwamba ninaachilia maisha yangu yote kwa mungu you know for my life all day long unajua maishani mwake siku 
siku nyingi are we praying or writing for God right. praying or writing for God yeye anakaa anaomba ama kuandika mambo ya Mungu or are we doing mission work ama anafanya kazi ya umishanani or pray for people ama kuwaombea watu so i dedicate my life to God kwa sababu sasa yeye anajiatilia maisha yake yote anampa Mungu now even one day when i'm dying na hata siku moja ile atakayokuwa akiaga dunia. When people come to me, watu wataka kumjia, I will say, I'm lying on the bed. Can I pray for you? <laughs> yaani atakuwa anaelekea kufa. Mtaka kokuja kumuona kama amelala kule kitandani kitanda chake cha kufa, atakamuuliza je, mngelipenda niwaombe? Even when I'm dying, I say to people, I encourage you to love God more. Hata kama anakufa, nasema kwamba atawahimiza watu wakaendelee kumpenda Mungu zaidi. I want to dedicate my whole life to God. Anataka kuachilia maisha yake yote kwa Mungu. And I also love God with all my feelings. Na anataka kumpenda Mungu na hisia zake zote. When I think of all the good things of God, anapowaza kuhusu vitu vyote vizuri vya Mungu, for instance the water he created. Kwa mfano, maji yale yaliyoungwa na Mungu. When you drink water, unapokunywa maji, it's good to the throat. Ni mazuri sana kwenye throat ni nini? Throat. Kwenye koromeo lako. And I like it. Na anaipenda. I like everything God does. Na anapenda sana kila kitu ambacho Mungu anafanya. I like the joy of the Lord. Anapenda furaha ya Mungu. Whenever I love God, anapompenda Mungu, I can feel joy coming to my heart. Anaanza kuhisi furaha ikijaza moyo wake. Whenever I think of God, anapofikiria kumhusu Mungu, I can feel how it goes through me. Anahisi nguvu zinamjaza. I really like God. Anampenda Mungu zaidi. And then worship with all our spirit. Na kuabudu na roho yake yote. In Psalm 103 verse 1, Zaburi 103 mstari wa kwanza. Then I praise his holy name with all that is in me. Ya kwamba ninaliabudu na kunisifu jina lake takatifu na mambo yote yaliyoko ndani mwangu. With all the inside of me, I love God and praise God. Yote vile vilivyo ndani mwangu vinamshifu Mungu. So we will learn to love God first with our mind. Ya kwamba tunampenda Mungu kwa akili zetu. Then we agree that God is the best. Unakubaliana kwamba Mungu ndiye mzuri wa kwanza agree with the bible na unakubaliana na biblia and then number two with all our will na ya pili ni kwamba na moyo wako wote and i take my life to god unaachilia maisha yako yote kwa mungu i give my whole life to god maisha yako yote unamwachia mungu and if all my feelings na sasa hata katika hisia zake i will you know like god in everything every blessing anajifundisha kumjua na kumpenda mungu kwa baraka zake zote whenever i think of god i like him anapofikiria kumhusu mungu anampenda zaidi you know all day long i think of god oh you're so wonderful kila wakati anapofikiria kumhusu mungu anasema kwamba mungu wewe ni wa ajabu he's truly wonderful kwa kweli wewe ni wa ajabu zaidi and i learned to like him very much na amejifundisha kumpenda mungu zaidi and whenever i like him na anapompenda mungu joy will flow out from my heart hallelujah ah, itabubujika ndani ya moyo wake And also I pray for many people and they experience the joy also. Na pia naombea watu wanahisi furaha ya Mungu pia. And I like that anointing. Na anapenda ule upako. That I can spread the joy of the Lord. Ili kwamba akasambaze ule upendo wa Mungu. So I like him very much. Anampenda Mungu zaidi. And also worship God with all my soul, all my spirit. Na sasa anamwabudu Mungu kwa nafsi yake yote na roho yake yote. So you can do this every day. Unaweza fanya hivyo kila siku. Lord I love you. Mungu nakupenda. I worship you with all my soul. Ninakuabudu na nafsi yangu yote. Haleluya. 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 Lord, I worship you. Ninakuabudu. utaweza kuona furaha inabujika ndani ya moyo wako find blessings every day na unazipokea baraka kila siku you can rejoice in the lord na utafurahia katika bwana rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice furahia katika bwana
we can enjoy our lives. Ya kwamba kila siku tunaweza kufurahia when we love God. Unapompenda Mungu. But when you put your heart on people, lakini unapowategemea tu wanadamu, we will be disappointed many times. Wanadamu watakukasirisha kile wakati. Have you been disappointed by people? Je, ushawahi kusirishwa na watu? But with God you never get disappointed. Lakini kwa Mungu hautawahi kusirishwa na watu. Is it wonderful to love God? Je, ni ajabu kumpendeza kumpenda Mungu? Because he sees your love. Kwa sababu anaona upendo wako. He remembers your love. Anakumbuka upendo wako. And he remember it and reward it. Anakumbuka na kulipa. And he will provide for you. Na Mungu basi atakupa vile unavyohitaji. And he will give you spiritual gifts. Atakupa vipawa vya kiroho. So you can serve him more kwamba ukamtumikie zaidi bless the people around you na kubariki watu walio kando yako and your life will go higher and higher na maisha yako tayari yataenda juu na juu zaidi is it wise to love god ya kwamba ni rahisi sana kumpendeza is it wise to love god je ni vizuri kumpendeza mungu amen is it wise to love god yes is it hard to love god je ni vigumu kumpenda mungu no Because just now we said when you repent the whole heaven rejoices. Kwa sababu tumesema kwamba unapotubu dhambi zako mbingu yote inashangilia na kufurahia. When you pray he will come to you. Unapoomba Mungu atakushuka chini penye upo. Actually he comes to us first before we pray. Na Mungu ako hata na sisi kabla tuombe. Even when we were a sinner he moves in our heart. Hata ulipokuwa mtanadhambi haukuacha peke yako alikuwa na wewe. Even when Christians are weak he moves in our heart. Hata kwa Kristo unapokuwa wadhaifu Mungu anawajaza Mungu. So he loves us while we were weak. Kwa hivyo alitupenda tulipokuwa wadhaifu. And then when we come to him he's very happy. Na tunapomwendea anakuwa na furaha. And then when we give a cup of cover he remember and reward. Unapopeana kikombe cha maji baridi Mungu anafurahia na atakupa thawabu. And then whenever we do things to love God, vyovote vile unavyofanya kwa kumpenda Mungu God will prepare for you things you never imagined. Mungu amekuwa atakuangalia vitu ambavyo haujawahi waza kuvihusu. Is it easy to please God? Is it easy? Je, ni rahisi kumfurahisha Mungu? Is it easy? Si ni rahisi? Yes. It's not hard at all. Sio vigumu. We just made up our mind. We just make up our mind. Ni vile tu unavyotengeneza mawazo yako. From now on I love him above all things. Na useme kwamba sasa leo ninampenda Mungu kushinda vitu vingine vyote. I love the Lord my God with all my heart all my soul. Unampenda Mungu kwa moyo wako wote kwa nafsi yako yote na kwa mawazo yako yote. With all my with all my strength. Kwa hisia zako na kwa nguvu zako. And when God sees that, Mungu anapoona hivyo, he is very happy. Anakuwa na furaha. And he bless us. Mungu atubariki. And he remembers our na atakwenda. Atatukumbuka. And he always react to us. Na yeye atatuongezea zaidi. When we love him, he always bless us. Unapompenda atakubariki kila siku. So do you want to choose to love him? Je, ungelipenda kuchagua kumpenda Mungu kwa nakanumba? Now in these few days I have training for ministry. Na sasa hivi siku chache ambazo wako hapa atakuwa na mafundisho ya kihuduma. From Monday to Thursday kutoka uh, Jumatatu hadi Alhamisi. If you have the heart to serve God, kama uko na moyo wa kumpenda Mungu, wa kutumikia Mungu, you can come to learn uje kwenye mafundisho. If you come please bring a notebook and a pen. Eskila sasa. Unapokuja hakikisha una kalamu na daftari be motivated to learn yani uwe na ule msisimko wa kujifundisha you can learn how to serve god and love god na utajifundisha jinsi ya kumpenda mungu na kumfurahisha mungu and your life will go higher and higher na maisha yako yataenda juu na juu zaidi yes. do you want your life to go higher ungelipenda maisha yako iende juu zaidi yes. hallelujah amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you believe now that it's easy to love God? Je, umeamini sasa kwamba ni rahisi kumpendeza Mungu? And whatever God did you for God, God will remember. Ya kwamba kile unachomfanyia Mungu, Mungu atakukumbuka. And how can we enjoy praying to God? Tunaweza basi kusherekea vipi kumuomba Mungu? Every time you pray, kila wakati unapoomba, believe that at the same time, amini huo wakati. God is very happy with you. Kwamba Mungu akona furaha 
kubwa na wewe. Now that's the key to enjoying praying. Huo ndio ufunguo wa kufungua uendelee kusherekea unapoomba. So whenever you love God, unapompenda Mungu. You say God is very happy that I love him. Unasema kwamba Mungu anafuraha kuna God will reward me. Na Mungu atanipa thawabu. Na Mungu atanipa nguvu. Haleluya. Haleluya. God is wonderful. Mungu ni wa ajabu. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He is so good to me. Alleluia. Pray for you. Kufanya mfano wa maombi. 